Welcome everyone to the definitive Destiny 2 How to Teach Raids guide. My name is Couch Buddy, and this series aims to teach you several ways to help teach other players how to teach the raids in Destiny 2. We will be going over several various ways to help increase your ability to teach the raids. We're going to be going over the various roles in every raid and how to assign those roles. We're going to be going over the mechanics in every current Destiny 2 raid. How to find the errors in new players as well as veteran players and how to assist those players to become better overall. And finally, we'll be going over patience and time. This week, we're going to be going over roles and how to identify roles in every one of the raids. You're going to have everyone split up into various teams. In the first encounter in Cali, for example, everyone will be broken up into teams of two. This will allow the players to get formal with the idea of grouping together, especially if they're new to Destiny 2 raiding overall. A lot of the Destiny 2 raids throughout history and Destiny 1 have all required you to group up in some way in teams of three or teams of two. There's never really been a point where there's been one player that needs to do a specific job while five other players do something else. In Destiny 2, the roles themselves are identified as follows. Kali, you're going to have three teams of two for the plates. Shuro Chi, you're going to need puzzle players and plate players. In Morgoth, you'll need two cleansers and four buff pickups. In the vault, you will need three symbol readers. In Riven, you will need two teams of three in order to do the eyes mechanic. If you're planning on doing the swords, which is by far the easiest method to defeat Riven, and if that's how you choose to teach Riven, you will just need everyone to stack on one side and apply plenty of buffs. In Queen's Walk, you'll just need to assign everyone to understand that the person going into the heart is the one that picks up the final pickup. For Garden of Salvation, most of the raid is broken up into teams of three. In the first encounter, and throughout the rest of the raid, break everyone up so that way they are on the same team all the time if possible. The first encounter, you'll need a, a go team and a stay team. After that, it just becomes the, the standard leapfrog mechanic. In the second encounter, break up everyone into two teams of three, a left team and a right team. In the third encounter, You'll have the moat team and the eyes team. For the final boss, you'll assign two moat teams and one build team. The deep stone crypt raid. For the first encounter, just make sure your new players follow you through the heat bubbles. For security, assign at least one new player to each of the roles if possible. If you have less than three new players, generally assigning them to operator or scanner is advised. These are the roles that get used the most throughout the whole entire raid. For a tracks, keep them on the same roles, but generally, if you have multiple new players other than three, so say four or five new players, you'll want to make sure that those players swap roles if they hadn't done the role in the previous encounter. I also advise that if you have any new players for spacewalk, have all players mute and just use the in-game text or unmute if they aren't following you where they need to go. For the nuke encounter where you first encounter Tanix, have all the players continue to do the roles that they've done and make sure you let them know of the deactivating augments. For Tanix, again, none of the roles change, so make sure all of your new players are assigned to the role that they had already had in any of the previous encounters. Now it goes to identifying your players. You'll need to be able to determine who is a new player and who is a quote unquote new player. What I mean by this is a new player is someone that is new to the Destiny rating experience or new to that raid entirely. They're either blind or have seen a couple guides but truly have never done the raid. The brand new player is the player you need to focus on. If I have a raid of five brand new players that have never done the raid, I make sure that each of them feel comfortable in what they're doing. If I begin having a mixture of new and quote and 
quote unquote new players. These are the players that I try to intermix. Generally, the new player, the player that has never done the raid, the the virgin player, if you will, I make sure that that player is assigned with myself or another veteran player, which I will get to in a minute. The other players, I try and have them group together. Identifying issues within those groups becomes much easier, and you can address those issues at large to the whole group and explain the wipes and the mechanics in a way that makes sense. You need to also identify who your veteran players are. Your veteran players are those that have run the raid many times over and know all of the mechanics in and out, much like your shelf should. In order to identify these players, generally, you could use resources like Raid Report. You could also just go kind of with how often you played with these players in the past or go with their word. It becomes very clear if they're a veteran versus one of those quote unquote new players when you begin to assign them to positions or roles or explain your strategies for completing the raid and they are very unfamiliar with those ideas or unwilling to adapt to those ideas. Your veteran players can be your strongest asset when it comes to your first raiding experiences to teaching new players because they are there to assist you and to make things a little bit easier. You're not looking to carry these players, remember, you're looking to teach them, so your veterans should also understand and be aware of that concept. If they're not willing or able to help you with this, I would advise not asking those players to raid with you. Lastly, you need to be able to identify a troll. A troll is someone that their aim and their goal is to waste your time and everyone else's. If you can identify a troll early on in your raid, and replace them with a veteran player that is willing to help, the end goal is to make sure that new players, brand new players to the raid, have a 100% amazing experience. A Destiny 2 raid is like Unother, and those experiences are very, very important, and trolls hinder that experience in a very, very negative way. So being able to identify them and knowing when they're just feigning being a new player is very important. Recognize the usual suspect concepts they act like they're new but they have a loadout that indicates they aren't they wear an emblem that clearly indicates that they are not new to the raid they do mechanics purposely wrong after explanations this is evident because they will purposely sabotage your raid in a way where they'll start encounters early consistently or they will interrupt your explanations or they will do other things that are intended to hinder your raid. Now, going forward into your raid, you need to make sure that you're playing to your strengths. Playing to your strengths means what are your strongest assets when it comes to the raid. For myself, it's my ability to call out and my ability to explain the encounters well. So how do I play those to my strengths? By being able to call out and explain the mechanics, I'm able to understand and fully grasp at any point in the raid where we need to be at. If a new player is struggling, I try and make sure I dictate to them the whole time in the raid and have constant communication going with them so that they're aware that this is a high intensity activity and that they need to be able to communicate back to me. Play to your strengths. If your strength is the ability to kill things rather quickly, sometimes putting yourself on, for example, the moat team and the final boss of Garden Salvation is a stronger asset than having you on build team where there's a much larger need for that constant communication. If you have a veteran player with you that has a better aptitude to being able to make those callouts, putting them on the build team with the new player or have the new player come with you on moat team is a much stronger and a better experience for that new player. If your strength is, for example, being able to execute mechanics rather quickly and well every time, have your new player assigned with you as a partner or on your team. Never leave that new player behind. Playing to their strengths. Make sure that you're playing to the new player's strengths as well. The new player is just as important as you are. If you're doing all of the jobs and killing all the enemies, it leaves nothing left for the new player to do. If you want to truly teach the raid, have them do something that may be slightly difficult at first, but is not overly complicated to do. Your goal is not to overwhelm the player, rather introduce them to this idea of the mechanic and have them at least attempt that mechanic. If after many attempts at that mechanic it's still not working, don't be afraid to change things up. 
a good Sherpa is able to identify when something's not working for that player, and they're able to move them to a new role seamlessly. In Deep Zone Crypt, if they're struggling with the operator role, maybe the scanner role is an easier role for them. If they're struggling to deal with any mechanic at all, sometimes it's best to go back to square one and explain all of the mechanics over. Don't be afraid to re-explain things if you continuously wipe. In order to assign roles to the new players, I'll have a guide here up on the screen. And this guide is going to be a tier list on the roles from easiest to hardest for a new player to learn. If you have more veteran players, putting a new player on a harder mechanic is a bit more feasible than if you have more new players. If you have three veteran players, let's say, and three new players, I would advise putting those newer players on mechanics that would be a moderate difficulty, which would be, in this case, something like the Eyes on Garden of Salvation. I enjoy putting players in a variety of spaces, and at the very onset of the raid, after I try and talk to the players before we even load in to get a sense of their prior experience with the game overall. If these are more experienced players that have previously done raids either in Destiny 1 or in Destiny 2, I might be more willing to put them on a harder mechanic as well. Don't be afraid to get to know your new players and get a little bit of background information into their experience. A player that's only a week into the game is not someone I want to put on a hard mechanic right away unless they ask for it and they're able to handle those mechanics. It's extremely important that these players feel comfortable at the end of the day and they enjoyed their experience. And your goal as the Sherpa is to provide that experience. Make sure that you're providing a wonderful experience and a space for those players to be able to grow and learn and challenge themselves without feeling defeated. Next week, I'll be going over each of the mechanics in all of the current Destiny 2 raids and going over how those correlate to a new player and how you can put those players on those mechanics successfully. Continue to watch this series for more other tips and tricks on how to be able to teach new players. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you next week.